just feel so lucky, oh, oh, 운명이랍니다. Yeah, yeah, the auto unmute isn't working. Okay, apologies, but yep. so we're talking about Autism Acceptance Month. Yeah, um, and, and you uh, missed the pun, and I'm not repeating it. Um, it was bad anyway. Uh, so uh, we have uh, welcome back to the Smart Dell News. It's Monday. Uh, as always, something goes wrong. Uh, better it be done quickly and over with. So um, we have uh, a couple of things to talk about today. Um, so let's get into it. <laughs> Starting up with some awakenings last week. We've got yep. uh, what's uh, interesting. I don't think we ever talked about her and I probably should have put a picture in here, but uh, Legion of Vitiligo. Yeah, uh, um, she's really cool looking actually. She's very cool. Um, I'm like actually a doll that I would consider probably in pair though. So yeah, we missed. Uh, this was an awakening. So she she was previously released, and I don't think we had been doing like the like new releases and awakenings at that point. Um, so we hadn't really uh, uh, mm -hmm. dropped her in here. But um, no new releases this past week. All awakenings, except for well, Divergence Coco didn't actually come out until this last week. <clears throat> uh, the was that true? Yeah. Oh, I messed that up. Well then, uh, sorry. Uh. Divergence Coco is the new release, um, and we did talk about her last week. And I could have sworn she we talked about her the week before, and then she came out the week after. I'm pretty sure she came out new release last week. Yeah, she was a new release. No, this past uh, week. like we talked about her last week. Anyway, time machine <laughs> or not, wrong or not, we're moving forward. Um, let's see what's next up. Okay. Here's four lovely ladies. Yes. Danny asked, who would you like to know more about? Um, I think you might 
be able to judge by the topic of this video which one was chosen. But right. <laughs> let's go through each of these. So we have Limitless. Yep, we've seen, we've actually kind of heard a decent amount about Limitless, but we'll be talking more. <laughs> and although there were supposedly some in Chaos, but the first actual release with the UV paint. Um, we have, and a yet unnamed pear girl. Mm -hmm. Very interesting brows on her. Yeah, very, very thick. Probably some of the thickest brows. And very low. Like yep. you the the um the the lid mark goes into the brow practically. Yeah. Um uh I'm not sure where I'm at with this one. I don't I don't know. I mean I like that she's different. I she's it she, her face sits really weird with me. I, I, and I think this is I really appreciate her and how different she is because, but I know that she's, you know, you know, somewhere along the lines of like Monday, there's going to be people who love her and people are like, nope, not for me. Barbie, which says that's uh Timothee Chalamet pear girl. Um, <laughs> I'm like, it what does, is the joke here? It does kind of look a little bit like Timothee. <laughs> it's, is it, is it Timothee, is it Timothee? Parame or is it Timothee Shalapair? <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah, no, she's totally. Oh God. Um, uh, it's Paula Atreides. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, very interesting. I love to see. I, I love to see more. Well, we're talking about diversity in general tonight, but. Uh, 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 or more yeah. specific, but more diversity in the face-ups of, of, of the dolls because there's a lot of times where it's just very subtle tweaks um, and you'll get people who are like, you know, one side of the fence or the other on two dolls that are practically the same. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send this out to Danny. Danny, if you have time and she's in front of you, can you put a curly wig on her? Like the <laughs> twist out and take a picture so we can see it? <laughs> Brilliant. Um, well, uh, you know what they say, if you walk without rhythm, you won't attract the worm. <laughs> Moving on. This girl definitely has a name. It's Ellie. Yes. So that is that is the, the face that he used for Ellie. Um, if she comes out, she probably will not be released as Ellie simply because he, he doesn't do licensed dolls anymore. <laughs> He'd be releasing her as a cosplay. Okay, so since Ellie is, you know, this is a this is a cosplay from The Last of Us, what is her name gonna be? that is somehow like mushroom or zombie related. Oh, I don't know. Chat, get in there. <laughs> um, uh, and another unnamed pear girl. With a little beauty mark down here. Yeah, and That's I cute. think is interesting. We're seeing more beauty marks um, and I love it. Uh, we've seen a beauty mark under the left eye thus far, and now we have a beauty mark on the uh, under the left side yeah, of the mouth, closer to the more traditional place that you would see one, you know, Marilyn Monroe esque kind of. Yeah. Um. Yeah, very cool. Uh. So, Sandy, uh, which was your choice? My order was one. Yeah. Followed by four, because new pair. Yeah. Followed by three. Followed by two. Um, simply because, I mean, I really love Three's face. I think Ellie is gorgeous. Um, but, and two, like I said, I just, I had made her last simply because, I don't know, I, I haven't, I don't hate her. I just, she just is different. Like, really different. Um, he says, uh, I add beauty marks to my dolls. And you're, like, it really, it's not like it should be that hard if you want to do it, um, it's, you know, one dot, basically. Right. Um, so uh, not too bad. Um, uh, I think uh, I would probably say, although you could do it with pencil, it might be nicer with, like, actual, like, a paintbrush. Of yeah. Just that little... And then getting the color right and making sure that it, it's shaped the way you want it and everything. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, everyone. Uh, he didn't give numbers or anything, but uh, his response shortly after this, was to tell us more about number one. So, that brings us to Autism Acceptance Month, or Autism Awareness Month, mm -hmm. uh, but in the last few years, 
uh, a number of the major organizations have moved towards Autism Acceptance Month because generally there's a lot of awareness of autism. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's really the, the message they're trying to get out there is about acceptance, mm -hmm. understanding, uh, you know. Uh, there's... Mainstreaming it because there's so many people. Yeah, being aware of autism uh, really doesn't stop autistic people from, or, well, it probably doesn't stop anybody, but uh, uh, from from getting bullied, you know, um, and, and it doesn't really, so there, the focus is on acceptance now, um, which makes sense to me. Uh, and Danny's uh, response, I guess, to this, uh, part of inclusivity and representation is limitless. Now, before we go to the next slide here, let's talk about her face. I love her face. She has this sort of, I don't know, it looks like she's like got a look of wonder. Like she's, she's just amazed by something, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and it's, it's not, I, you know, I think there are, if he had done a less neutral face, I think it would have, I don't know, maybe just been playing into stereotypes and things like that. And mm -hmm. I think I'm kind of happy with her just being a somewhat soft, neutral face. Um, uh, and she's very cute. And I like the uh, the extra, like, I like his new round of eyelashes that he's been doing. She does remind me a lot of Future. Yeah, uh, Garvis um, says, uh, um, also reminds her of the uh, original Survivor face. A little bit, a little bit. Um, but, uh, uh, Survivor but, has much more, like, lashes going everywhere mm -hmm. kind of thing. But she's, she's, she, she says future to me way more than, uh, than that. Because of the softness and the freckles? The freckles, the softness, the big, the big wide-eyed looking kind of face. The slim eyebrows. Um, her eyebrows are different, but they're, they're... You know, they're both, they're very light eyebrows. Um, Bags Lover says she looks quite sad to me. Um, which I guess I can see that. Um, maybe uh, the only thing I would say is that you could say that she maybe looks, I would say rather than sad, concerned or confused. Maybe wistful. I, I wouldn't say she, I, I can see where you can go. And, and I think depending on what your, like, I think you your brain can kind of lean this in a number of different ways. But yeah, I, I can see how maybe she's a little bit left of neutral, if you will. Um, yeah. Uh, because she does have that slightly downturned uh, mm -hmm. mouth. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and that's not quite a be, frown. That could just be concerned deep in thought, kind of. Yeah, Carla mm -hmm. says, I see thoughtful. Uh, Grape Kitty agrees, uh, wistful. And Holly Kay says, uh, innocence. She's mm -hmm. seen innocence in this look. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I definitely see that. Um, uh, what you don't see, segue, is the infinity symbol on her forehead. Uh, we've, he's previewed this a couple of times mm -hmm. now, uh, which is using the combination of like the tattoo techniques that they were working on and ultraviolet paint. Uh, Having this represent neurodivergence and uh, 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 autism is, I think, really cool. Yeah, I think it's a really neat idea. Like, you know, we loved it with the Kintsugi showing, like, the repair from trauma kind of a thing. But this is just showing the differences that you can't normally see unless you look carefully and in a certain way. So it's, it's, a, it's an interesting, like, analogy. Now says... I think she looks uh, like, uh, I don't know, I can't read faces. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm assuming is what she's saying and not what Kanal is saying. <laughs> um, the, uh, yeah, there's an element of, I just, I think, uh, um, uh, I guess I uh, just to catch up on chat here, Lee said uh, she looks wistful as well. Um, Manda responded, uh, bullseye for the internalizing. Yeah. And I do think, yeah, like there is kind of this element. That's what of, I was saying, like confused, thoughtful, um, contemplative. Yep. Not necessarily sad, just trying to figure something out. And 
confused may not be the right word because that sound that can have a real negative connotation. But yeah, I see. I, I see. Yeah, you, you, it's um, yeah. I wouldn't say confused, but I get I get what you're trying to to say there, and I can't think of the right word. But um, I think thoughtful, wistful, like it's you know, um, uh, internal. Uh, uh, dolls are she, she thinks she looks uh, 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 she looks uh, younger than the other smart dolls seem to. Uh, with bangs, I think she'd look really young. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, with bangs, you would very definitely cover up the uh, the infinity symbol. Which is fine, because it's ultraviolet anyway. You need a light to shine a light on it to really see it. Yeah, but you need the light, and now you need to move the hair. It's kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. bangs work if it's there permanently. Mm -hmm. um, uh, with, with this, you know, with the ability to just have a, a pen light, this is a, a UV pen light, which sadly doesn't work, and I don't think I should be shining at a camera anyway, even if it did. Um, but you can get these on Amazon, uh, a uh, number of places, uh, and, uh, I use this, uh, or was supposed to use this, uh, for, uh, you know, curing, you know, little spot curing resin, things like that, uh, and you can use it for, uh, shining a light. I would not recommend that you, like, leave your doll in UV light all the time. Uh, it's not good for the vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, so there is an element of that. But, you know, shining it to reveal this uh, is, you know, is not enough. I mean, it, you're you're probably never going to get to the point where you're spending more time doing that than you would, like, uh, uh, using UV light, for instance, to help uh, speed up the process of stain removal or something like right. that. Um, but all things that can impact the uh, the vinyl... Uh, so do be aware of that if you are over, you know, using this. But I don't think, I really don't think anyone's going to accidentally overuse this unless you literally no, sat that, her that, in front of, of a... the purpose of that uh, is to show uh, somebody, or when you're taking a picture, you might want to shine it on there while you're taking your picture so you can actually catch the, uh, you know, like if you're taking photos of your dolls and you want to show that symbol. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, can also just uh, glow in the dark paint would be cool too. I'm trying to think if that would work better or not. Um, you know, glow in the dark is essentially a phosphorescent paint. It's going to charge up with UV light, mm -hmm. you know, with the uh, sunlight, and uh, and then it's you know going to uh, give off its glow uh, mm -hmm. in the dark. I I feel like I feel like this makes. I don't know. It's nice that you can have it and like turn off the lights and it's just there and working. Um, but I don't know. This this seems kind of nice to me of just being able to have it in the moments when you need it. Uh, Juna Thorne says you can ruin UV can ruin your doll. I'm not a fan. Um, yeah, it can ruin your doll if you leave it in prolonged exposure. Yeah, you would. You need to. You need to do it a lot. Uh, so uh, you know, like I said, like. Shining and revealing this and showing it to somebody and, you know, uh, checking that it's still there. I don't know why, you would, but, um, you know, it's, it, I, I don't see this doing that much damage. Uh, um, you need to, uh, you need to, um, you need to really do a lot, like yeah. a lot. And these types of lights aren't enormously powerful. Uh, as far as UV lights go. Um, so. I mean, if you look at it as though the guy who makes these dolls is doing it, like it's not, this is not something that's been added later by a customizer. This is the guy who makes the dolls is saying, hey, it's okay to put this on your doll and shine a UV light on it. Yeah, I, all right. Devil's advocate though, Danny can accept a lot more risk than <laughs> most doll owners can because he can just have another one whenever. But yeah. It's not like, you know, it's not just because Danny does this. Like, it's like, you're not gonna, you would have to do it a lot more. I wouldn't be so concerned about a little bit of UV light. Like I said, we use UV light and, you know, combination of UV light and products to do stain removal. Uh, and that stays in for a much more extended un amount of time under a much stronger light. Mm -hmm. And we avoid doing it as much as possible, but I, you would have to, Cumulative, you're talking about hours and hours and hours under direct UV light versus right. flashing a, a little light across here. Um, 
what else? Uh, uh, what is Danny uh, had a whole post about this, mm-hmm. um, and he did point out a, a couple of things, basically of why he's doing it. Um, and he talked about it representing, yes, specifically the autism community, but also promoting awareness for all neurodivergent conditions. Right. I mean that that symbol is represents neurodivergence. The, this infinity symbol is, is neurodivergence, and then if you color it different ways, it means different things. Yeah. So, so um, uh, very broad. I, I mean, I want her for you know we both have ADHD uh, and uh, uh, the a comorb- slew a slew of other comorbidities. Yes. <laughs> um, and uh, so it it's very cool. Love the representation, um, and I still would love to see. A UV Kinsugi, um, to have the like the invisible cracks. Um, yeah, that'd be very cool. Uh, as well, which kind of, you know, like this has the sort of like neurodivergence. Um, the cracks to me kind of help represent like uh, other hidden conditions like depression for me, bipolar. You know, like it, there's, you know, it's. There's a lot of cool ways with different symbolism that he can represent. Um, Definitely, uh, uh, people. We talked about like the butterfly, which can represent um, ADHD, is often used for ADHD. So that would be very cool, like a like butterfly around the eyes and stuff like that. <laughs> Lee says, "I would go crazy for UV Kintsugi, Kints UV." <laughs> um, brilliantly, thank you. Uh, the uh, the other thing uh, that I uh, think was interesting, um, if I can now remember what I was going to say, uh, um, the members of the community. Um, no, it was uh, neurodivergence, um, ADHD. I don't know. It's gone. There's ADHD moment. Yep. <laughs> um, Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> oh wow um so uh yeah it was something about uh uh how the the infinities oh like okay why it's infinity now the infinity symbol is representative of neurodivergence because of the sort of infinite spectrum of the conditions and things like that like you know, they talk about, you know, autism spectrum disorder. Like, it's not just a thing. It is a, uh, I forget what the, the a conglomerate, it's not the right word, but it's one of those C words. Um, uh, convergence. A convergence of multiple symptoms rising to a, you know, such a degree, like for us with ADHD, all things that normal people have, all various symptoms, but in com- such a combination at such uh, intensity that it actually impacts our our lives um, and makes it hard to get normal stupid things done. Um, so I think the there's that aspect of it. But what about the aspect? Because uh, he talks about endless possibilities uh, uh, within the community. Um, there's also kind of this aspect of like we talk about like ADHD is a superpower. Mm-hmm. Um, autism is a superpower. Like this, this idea that like it's not, it it's not necessarily. You, you can look at things as like a, a disorder and things like being different, um, but you can also look at the amazingness of neurodivergent brains and the things that we can do. Um, sure, I mean if you look at like they, I've read things that talked about like based on what we know of life experiences of certain. Uh, famous people in the past, like Albert Einstein, Thomas Edison, um, there is suspicion based on the accounts of their lives that they probably had ADHD. Yeah, and, you know, it, it, a lot of... It, it doesn't surprise me that some of the greatest minds in, you know, uh, in our history were neurodivergent because it's thinking differently so differently from everybody else and being able to look at the world in a different way that helped every one of them uh, uh make the impact that they had on the world mm-hmm. um so whatever you know uh whatever their brain chemistry was 
um, uh, it made them who they are, which is, I think, very cool. Um, he also did some call outs, which yep. I think is great. So, so some members of the community, the autistic community, um, the autistic smart doll community, helped uh, helped Danny. Um, so we had L D G, Lori, Holly, Vanessa. Corinne, Joanna, Madison, and Noah all helped uh, with the making of Limitless. Which is fantastic. Uh, you know, thank you all so much for, you know, jump-starting that, you know, that uh, uh, that conversation with Danny and uh, and giving all the feedback. And of course, like, Twitter, the, the Twitter community uh, is, you know, has been vocal with him on this and all of the stuff that he's been working on. As Twitter yeah. does. Yep. But for, in this, for good or ill. I was going to say, in this case, it was positive. Um, yeah, so uh, let's take a moment and thank them. And also, thank you <laughs> for hanging out with us. Uh, if you are enjoying uh, the news tonight, finding it entertaining, uh, in, hopefully informative, uh, and, and loving the conversation, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, hitting that like button is one of the best ways that you can help spread this video to more people. Uh, and that is one of the easiest ways that you can uh, support uh, our community. Um, which leads us to... I in the sea! <laughs> I was like, Sandy's like giving this whole thing. I'm like, oh no, she's not being. Oh, yes, she is. Now, <laughs> now I'm uh, uh, messing it up. Uh, so uh, we have. Um, I see we've got some thumbs up in the chat. You got to do it on the page, <laughs> just so you know. Um, the uh, first up here is, and Sandy, you've. You're kind of new to some of this stuff. Yeah, I didn't see this. I don't know why how I missed it, but so this is the flo the floral uh, pattern from the uh, the floral bikini. Oh yeah, and uh, I don't know what the difference here is. Um, it looks like all the same fabric. I don't know if it's like different levels in the print itself, but the actual like pattern block on each of these looks exactly the same. But he's labeled them A, B, C, D, E, F, um, and circled this one up here. You can also see uh, this sort of linen fabric is, uh, you know, does have some sheerness to it. You can see the the white sheet of paper underneath mm -hmm. uh, showing through. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure. I see what it is either. I don't see. I don't see any difference, uh, honestly, at all. So um, I don't know what the choice is, uh, uh, other than. Again, it's really like what I'm seeing differences to me, I think is lighting. Like, like shade, there's, some, there's shade, yeah. there's it's more shade over here. Oh, there's it's also like what's what's got paper behind it or not. So. Yeah, I don't know. Anybody got any theories on this one? But what we do know is uh this is uh, like weeks later he did put out this. So it is becoming uh new uh capri pants for the pear body. Really cute. Yeah. I like them mm. a lot. They're very, very cute. Uh <laughs> with with the including the instructions not to put uh, flowers in the crotch, it looks like I don't know. It's hard to say. I think that's what that is. Um, and you know what? That would look really cute with those. Would look really cute with the bikini top, like with a shirt over it, like a like with a white shirt. With, okay. And, and then the bikini top, and then the pant. That would look really cute. It'd be yeah. very cute, like a uh, like a, a casual, like cruise wear kind of beachy look. Um. It is, it's definitely a different fabric than the bikini. Um, so I'm not sure how that would look next to each other. But. Yeah, Isabel commented that those six things could have been different textures of fabric. I, I really don't think so because these are the, it's two strips of fabric. So if anything, there's fabric difference between the top one and the bottom one. There wouldn't be six sets. But maybe, um, uh, maybe it's a combination of two different fabrics and a combination of, uh, like for instance, I think maybe the bottom one has more sheerness than the top one. Uh, if you can look like you can see the line of the paper here more, but it could also be lighting. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. Um, 
We also have this new, I, I'm going to say sports bra halter top Yeah, it moment. looks like it's going to have a little keyhole in the front. Yep. Which is really neat. Uh, and uh, I'd be interested to see how it ties. It. My guess is it's going to be a tie tie, like the like the bikini or something. Mm -hmm. Um, it's going to have a, a physical tie in the back. Uh, otherwise, um, it's going to be off. Otherwise, you're going to have to take the head off to get this on. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's uh interesting. And here we have a face mask being cut. Uh, and I find it, it's, it's kind of interesting here. I think you can, it's hard to see what's happening here, but this is how they carve out, you know, they basically like drill a hole, I think in, into the, uh, uh, into the face mask, mm -hmm. uh, and then string through that hole. It, it essentially like a, like a bandsaw or like, this is like a, a file or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny strip, uh, that they use to cut, um, and you can see here it's just like cutting into the point and then they're going to kind of carve out the uh, lash. Yeah. yeah. That's some delicate work. Very delicate. Uh, and this is uh, all part of this girl, which you believe you've identified that I'm we've seen her before. I'm sure that is the girl that he said is coming out at the end of the year whose name I cannot think of at the moment. But... That's the one that's going to be... Or uh, the one we speculated. The one was... I speculated was going to be the head for the new athletic body that he was working on. Yep. Um, and I, you know, if somebody wants to say it in the chat, I cannot think of the name that he has given this character. It's another, like, long one, like, not everything to everyone, and I can't think of... Well, what we can see called. here that she... We've got her in, like, two different stages. Um, uh... Ends of the Earth, or is it Ends trouble? Ends of the Earth. Ends of the Earth. Ends of the Earth. Um, uh, that one uh, goes to Carla. Um, we have two different colors here, which is interesting. We've got red and blue. Um, uh -huh. It looks like he's leaning blue at the moment, and we've got another uh, uh, another beauty mark. Which is good to see. Same mask that he has. Uh, currently, from what we can tell, he has two beauty mark masks, and that is this one for the G7 sculpt. Mm -hmm. That's used for um, uh, Never Say Never. Yep. Mm -hmm. And now Ends of the Earth. Um, and we have the one that we saw earlier in the show uh, on, a, on the left side of the uh, lip on the G8, the Pear Girl mm -hmm. sculpt. Um, but uh, yeah, what do you? What color do you like? Do you like the red or the blue? I like the left. Yeah. Do you like the left because of the, the eyebrows? Like, if I cover the... Um, I just, the red is just a little bit odd to me, but I'm wondering if that is a bottom layer for something else. I, I doubt it. Um, it's a lot messier. I think it was just, you know, trying stuff out. Um, I they, do like the thickness of it. I think it's it's interesting that sort of because like a lot of people do like makeup now where it's a lot softer underneath the eye. Mm -hmm. um, so that is kind of neat, but I, I I still like the left. Um, I did. I pulled this in here before I before I had consulted with Sandy just to say like this is definitely not. Uh, transcendence mm -hmm. does have some similarities in like the lash, but obviously the the eyebrows aren't the same, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, we also see this. I find this interesting. I think this is where he stores the eyes all pre-installed on uh, uh, the eye cradles. Okay, uh, be, and he's calling it this brain bank, Mystic Gray. So it's colors. And it's uh, it's got an eyeball next to it, so it's clearly for the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it funny that he's uh, he's labeled this the brain bank, which I think only makes sense if they have cradles, right? And he's sort of putting the brains into uh, the doll. Uh, someone's taking inventory. Uh, I I I just found this kind of amusing, and it's just such a like core basic like 
simple mechanical device. <laughs> like how many they have of something? So yeah, it's, it's a counter. Like, so you, you, when you're doing inventory, have... you just click, 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 click. Yeah, those are supposed to use a lot of times for, those look like the things that they use for tracking number of customers coming in. Um, yeah, pretty sure they're not doing that. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, what is what is eight? Like, I, I'm curious to know why we are seeing that and why. Like how much, what do they have eight of? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, you've got hands mostly, the hand packs back here, um, and various option parts. Um, that school uniform, yep, probably for the pair. Would yep, be my def guess. definitely for the pair. It says it on the uh, the little instruction. Uh, so I like cool. that print. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm very. I'm, it's funny because I normally like the bright colors, but I really like the the black and gray. Yeah, and it's a. Uh, Is there some, some brown in there? It's uh. It is black, gray, white, and I'm gonna say yellow. That's reading on towards the green side, okay. but it's largely, I think, fading out because it's like cross hatched. Yeah, it's um, that, that's it's a cool that's a cool print. I like it. So I'll say a greenish yellow tartan. I should say. Uh, now we're getting some Cortex updates. Uh, some sh different shots of the models, uh, the, the 3D models that they're working on. Uh, uh, this is, but. Uh, Bust version two, version forty one. <laughs> so it's the forty one, uh, the forty one, the forty one uh, uh, revision. Really, it should be like you know, bust v two point four one, but um, uh, uh, Danny likes two version numbers. Apparently, uh, we have a better look at the torso, and Danny talked about this a while ago. But um, do you remember what all these are for? All, all the, the triangles. Uh, I do not remember. Well, triangles are the strongest shape, uh, in geometry, basically. Oh, so uh, is it to take? It's to give it strength with, but taking away some thickness. Yes. So we can get thinner parts at you know, and keeping the shell thin, uh, at basically reducing, adding strength, but limiting uh, the addition of weight. Uh, and so he talked about doing this a while ago that they were kind of revisiting that. Um, and, uh, yeah, you can see the, uh, the outside of it. Uh, and here is the 3D version of that. Uh, it is coming along nicely. Some feet. Um, this is, yeah, it's not, it's not like this is pear or anything. No. Um, yep, feet, which we haven't really seen too much of. Um, and, uh, just as a reminder, these little thin lines, like all these lines are, geometry lines they're the mesh that makes this 3d model uh the where you see them like really butted up like the three lines here that's where you're getting like actual lines carved into the foot so these denser lines uh and these actual complete cutouts here are what you'll see on the foot not all these little things i love the idea that you know one of the things that bother me about bothers me about cortex is the visible screws but with the the focus on it being cyber, yeah, I don't mind the screws as much. Yeah, and and Danny has talked about that from day one with this like making it cyber really just leaning into that leans into the the aesthetics of the screws and everything you know mm -hmm. it it just sells itself. And I I'm looking forward to the potential of like seeing what people do with like you know, maybe painting individual panels before they put the doll together and stuff like that and really, like, really emphasizing that pieced together quality. We also have a new version of the uh, Evolve frame. Some interesting add-ons here. I'm not sure, like, what's an add-on or what's something that's, like, like, it's actually being added on or is sort of being demonstrated as, like, coming from something else. Mm -hmm. um, but it looks like he has made some changes to the Evolve frame. This is the uh, the hip. And those changes are adding more stability into the shell. Okay. Um, so notice, take note of this stuff here. This, these, are, these red parts are, I believe, new. Uh, and here is a look at the inside of the shell for one side of the thigh. Mm -hmm. And you can see the part where that fits in. 
and then the screw hole that comes in next to it. So there's, uh, it, it's, I, the only thing I could reason that I think this should is possibly why he's adding it would be added stability so that like right now, like the pair girls are very floaty. Yeah. The legs though, you can turn the leg shell. And for, uh, I mean, especially probably, I don't know if this is, I don't know if, when he's going to start working on the pair, like a pear cortex, but I would imagine with the size of a pear thigh, having something like this for added stability, you know, will make it so that you're not having like the stability of that shell be resting on like that one spot. Um, so, uh, and probably prevents like twisting and, and stuff like that. Um, Lee says pear text. <laughs> yes, fair text. I love it. Um, yeah, uh, that uh, that does it for behind the scenes. Um, we did have a question. Michaela Rose uh, says, "Will Danny restock some of the smart doll?" Uh, not sure what, exactly which ones you're looking for, but he's always putting out um, restocks. Um, that's what we're calling the awakenings. Um, rather than new releases, the awakenings are when the the uh, the the restock of the dolls comes out. Yeah, um, you you can definitely see. We'll go back there real quick. Um, you can see all all these dolls are dolls that are getting you know uh, uh, re released and are selling out. So uh, he, you know, right now in general. Uh, Aside from frontline dolls, which are there, like, you know, all the dolls with differences, um, uh, you know, Coco dolls, pear dolls, uh, all the dolls that are really representation oriented, those are, he's committed to providing enough stock that they're always available. Right. Uh, and then these get filled in uh, every week uh, as he releases more. And people make requests on Twitter and stuff. And it seems like some of the uh, the more old school dolls are getting their getting their. Uh, so I'm about to say this, getting their moment. Um, uh, you know, like Melody has gotten released every week for the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, moment just got a, a re release. Um, so those are some of the dolls that have been around for a while. Um, and then, um, but you know, the dolls that are people are interested in right now are the ones that the, the longtime collectors are, you know, the new, the newer ones like Legion, uh, the moon is made of cheese, etc. The ones that, the ones that have not been around as long yeah. are getting, getting bumped out, but there are still, he, so yes, he is releasing more, sm All more the time. smart dolls. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, if it's a specific doll you're after, uh, that hasn't been around in a while, um, it's hard to say if it's like if it hasn't been dropped in a, like years, it's probably going to be hard to get them to to release it. But uh, you never know. Uh, the sort of game that is kind of played out there uh, is people have been manifesting dolls, uh, which is essentially getting Danny's attention on Twitter with some creative uh, uh, image of what you want manifested. Uh, and I I don't think it's enough to be like, I want to manifest this and post a I saw someone literally just post a product picture. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to catch Danny's attention. You want to be Do something creative. fun. And it doesn't have to be good. Like, you know, you don't need Photoshop skills, you know, you You, you can know. draw on your with on your phone in your photo edit with you put yep. your finger. He'd... There's a lot of simple photo editing software out there available, both like on websites and, you know, on like probably that came with your computer. Uh, anything that would let you like cut things out or anything like that. Uh, you can just start like, you know, pour, like crudely cut out, uh, you know, uh, a head of the doll that you want and like slap it on your head and then do so, you know, I don't like have fun. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, yes, uh, Tempest Strife uh, has it right. We're talking MS Paint level skills. <laughs> yeah, um, I think one of my favorite ones. I give a shout out to this person. I hope that if they if they watch us, um, that did one that was like two panels of like an X Men comic, and it was Wolverine laying on his bed looking at a picture, and then in the second frame they showed the picture. And the person had replaced the picture with like a photo of a smart doll. Yeah, it's like it's like <laughs> supposed to be him like doing it. I mean, it's a meme. Like you could get a meme generator, you know, and yeah. insert like smart doll. 
uh, and you know, and, and he'll he'll enjoy it. So it's it's hard to say. It's no guarantee, obviously, but um, you know, it's just a matter of getting noticed. And if you're lucky, maybe he'll do a drop of of that one. If it's some again, if it's somebody who hasn't been around in a very long time, then uh, you you might uh, I don't know. It might take more than just you, unfortunately, uh, to to get his attention. But um, so uh, yeah, um, I think. Uh, that means it's a good time to dance. We've been driving around, singing songs way too loud because we wanna. Picking up a love friends, fill up the car to live best because we wanna. We wanna. Yeah, we just wanna have fun. The trunk's full of wine. We're gonna stay up, have the time of our lives. The night is in. Uh, that was uh, got a couple of eclipse photos yep. uh, there um, from last week. We so. never got glasses. We didn't get to see it. Um, we were at uh, where we are. We were at like ninety eight point four percent or something like that. Which it means it never really um, got all that dark. It didn't get that dark. The shadows got a little weird, which was kind of yeah. cool. A little crispy. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, yeah, not not too much happened. Uh, I mean, we didn't even really talk. We literally streamed that night and didn't talk about it. But um, uh, yeah, we don't leave our house <laughs> unless we're unless we're going to a convention. Yeah, or, we do leave our house to go to conventions or complying with your company's return to office order. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, speaking of conventions, we are attending, um, we will be part of the Smart Doll Outpost at Anime Impulse in Seattle. Yep. Um, that is coming up in May. We'll be, uh, we'll be launching, uh, a tea there. Um, it's probably not unexpected what it's going to be, but I'll leave it as a surprise. Um, uh, and, uh, then of course it will be available online as well. Uh, just to warn you, I mean, we're talking about buying physical inventory, which is risky. So um, uh, we're we're gonna do our best to try and uh, not come home <laughs> with t-shirts, uh, or just not come home. Well, I mean, yeah, I, my work would be fine with that. <laughs> That's <is> true. <laughs> um, uh, they'll be happy to have me in Seattle. Uh, but uh, and uh, we also will be at the Geekdom Con. Uh, yes, that is in Philadelphia the following weekend. So. Um, we will be, yes. It's going to be a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, my mother is coming to visit and going to watch our dog for, for a couple of weekends. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Lou, for making that possible. Um, and uh, yeah, we can't wait to see uh, all y'all in Seattle and in Philadelphia. And uh, yeah, we will see you there. Um, we definitely need to take a moment and thank our Discord subscribers. We love you guys. We, I, seriously, like, it's, it is, uh, you know, you guys carry this, you know, this channel and really enable us to do this. And, uh, I, I, we thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> quite, quite honestly, the, uh, uh, you know, it's tax time, so it's on my brain. The t-shirts really are a loss for us at this point. Um, so uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, not a huge loss, but, you know. It's you guys that keep us going. Yep. Uh, so we really, really, really thank you and um, uh, uh, look forward to meeting more of you in the future. Uh, and uh, Come see us in Seattle. Come see us in Philly. Um, in Philly, we will be there with... Uh, with uh, uh, who are we going to be with? We're going to be with Kitten Catchup and mm -hmm. Shizu San and uh, Tepestrafe, who is in the chat. Um, Ningo, I can never say the name. 
Of N- Ningo, your... Ningo Bingo? Yes. <laughs> um, so we will all be there just sharing the love of dolls um, and sh- bringing parts of our collection to show to everyone. And then, of course, the all the information for uh, Anime Impulse and the Smart Doll Outpost has been shared by Danny, um, us, and the other uh, nine creator vendors that are going to be there along with Danny. It should be a lot of fun. Um, uh, thank you all so much. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.